Who is there among us who have not heard, has not heard of the second coming of Jesus? Those of us who believe his word expect him to come back to this earth just as he said he left. He's coming back in the clouds just as he left. The scripture makes that very clear. He's coming one last time, his second coming and last coming. He's coming to catch away his bride. First thing that's going to happen, one of these days soon, our Lord is going to put a sudden end to time. Time shall be no more. You'll find it in Revelation, don't turn there, but the 10th chapter in the first seven verses of Revelation. An angel is going to be sent from Christ, going to send to this earth, he's going to put his foot on the sea and in the land, and he's going to announce and proclaim that time is ending. Time shall be no more, that the mysterious plan of God is completed, the salvation of mankind is completed, the last prophecy has been given, the last church service has been held, the last soul has been saved, that's going to be saved, and he's going to plant his foot on the sea and the earth and announce, time shall be no more. And folks, when the angels of the Lord hear the sound that he's going back to earth to redeem mankind, when it suddenly dawns on angelic host that man, this great creation of God, who is so loved, this, this, adder, this Christ who has given his very life for mankind are coming home. And they're going to be one with us. What a shout there's going to be in glory. What a shout there's going to be. The seventh angel is going to make a mighty shout. And he's going to cry, the kingdoms of the world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. This is the day that they've longed for. The day that they've imagined, the day the martyrs will be vindicated. When the saints are going to get new bodies, and the bride is going to meet the Lamb of God, and the angels and the redeemed of all ages are going to meet together around the throne of God. This is the day. What a host is coming. Now, not only is it going to be the end of time, it's going to be the end of all power and authority of the enemies of Jesus Christ of uh, atheistic forces, of the media that's taking power, of homosexual power that's gaining authority here in America. And the Lord says, don't get riled up because it's not going to last much longer. It's all destined for the fires. It's not going to be forever. Let them have their day. Don't get worked up about it because you know how the story ends. All things are going to be put under the rule of Jesus Christ. Those that have this growing power are not going to prevail. It's all suddenly going to end in a moment of time. The Father will say to His Son, Jesus, go now, put on your robes and appear in glory. Empty the heavens of all the angels and the glorious spirits. Set on your judgment seat. Call the world to judgment. Judge and seal the reprobates to hell and bring your bride and the redeemed of the earth into glory. Hallelujah. He's not coming alone. He's coming with all the host of heaven. And they're going to appear in the heavens. And he's going to sit on his throne in a cloud of glory and fire. And the Bible said the sun and the moon will refuse to shine. And what that means is that the brightness of his coming is so bright that the sun will seem darkness in comparison. It will be darkness in comparison. Folks, one of these days there's going to be a bright light. You'll be in a building like this. You could be in a building with no lights and it will light up inside. A transparent light. Every man on the face of the earth, every child, the islands of the sea are going to see him. He's coming in flaming fire. That's the very fire that's going to consume the heavens and the earth. He's going to come in a brightness, in a cloud of fire. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Oh, with great glory. All the glory of His created beings in heaven. Behold, He cometh with clouds and every eye shall see Him. And all they also which pierced Him. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. The homosexual tribe will mourn. The atheistic tribe will mourn. The 
communistic tribe will mourn all the tribes, the sinful tribes, because sin always gathers together tribes, and all these tribes are going to mourn. One of these days, it melts like butter in the fiery presence of God. What a emptiness. We're here to combat that. We're not here as enemies. We're here as friends of Jesus Christ to proclaim that that world is dying and decaying. It's all over. And there's only one thing that counts now is where you are with the Lamb of God. You know, when he appears, every time he's appeared, it's been in brightness. You remember he appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration and the brightness was so bright the disciples fell on their face. Do you remember when Jesus appeared to Saul? It was so bright, he fell on his face and he was blinded. In fact, he had to have hands laid on, he had to be healed, and scales fell off his eyes just at the sight of the brightness of Jesus Christ. He's going to have to give us special eyes to see. We'll not be able to even gaze at that with, with, with our human bodies. He's going to have the angel that's going to come and collect us. Now talk about the men. He's going to have to shield our eyes until we get our new bodies. Hallelujah. The sinners are going to cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them, to hide them. Demons are going to flee in terror. The mockers and scoffers are going to fall as dead men before his vision. Those who forsook him and turned their back and rejected his mercy. There are no words to describe the terror of those who knew and rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, the third event. First of all, he's going to send an angel. The seventh angel is going to announce the end of time. And he's going to come and appear his great retinue and glory. He's going to appear in the heavens and every eye, everyone is going to see. They're going to hide themselves. They're going to mourn. They're going to, to the Bible said they're going to try to kill themselves and will not be able to. Just at the awesome terror of his appearing. And then, as he appears, he's going to send his angels. First, he's going to roar. He's going to thunder. Can you imagine when he stands in the heavens above this earth? He shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. They shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. The hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. And all he's going to say, Saints, arise! What a thundering in every grave in the history of this earth. Going to thunder all over the world from Moscow to London, all through America. All the graves of all of our great servants of God in New England. They're going to rise, going to shake the graves. And the Lord is going to say to the angels, Go now and gather my elect. Go to the bottom of the sea where every man has ever drowned who loved me. Go down to the depths of the pits of the earth and I won't lose one atom. I want every atom brought to me. Of every one of my children, not one grain of dust will be lost. Hallelujah. The Bible said... Those of us who are alive and remain, the dead are raised first, and we alive and remain are going to be caught up to meet him in the air. Folks, do you get that picture? The angels are awaiting that scene. If you could call them breathless, they would be breathless. Anticipating this resurrection. What a resurrection day. When every dead saint of all time is called home. A host of angels are gathering from the four winds, and they're gathering them home. We are going first, hallelujah, the saints go first because we're going to be there to judge the world with him. I'm going to show it to you very clearly. This we're going to judge the world. We're going to judge fallen angels. We're going to judge the devil. He's going to gather the, the elect. Can you imagine what it's like when suddenly there is Abraham, there's Isaac, there is Jacob, there's Peter, there's Paul. They're all the saints of all times. And we're there and we're all discovering our new bodies. We're looking at these new bodies because they're in the image of the Son of God. And I think the first thing is going to be this sudden realization, this is a new body. Something's happening. In a moment of time, the Bible said, in the twinkling of an eye, bat your eye. That's how quick it's going to happen. In the twinkling of an eye. 
we are going to be transported into new bodies in His own images. In His own image. Hallelujah. We'll recognize one another because the Bible said we're going to remember one another. How can we give an account if we don't remember? You know, we're going to remember. We're going to see. We're going to know one another. We're going to know as we are known, the Scripture says. Somehow we're going to know Abraham. Somehow we're going to know everybody. Even though there's a name to have it, only the Lord knows. We're going to know. He's going to have that wonderful fellowship of the saints. We're going to know. If we're going to know him, we're going to know his saints. Hallelujah. Suddenly, there he is. The one we have sung about. And he's sitting on his throne of judgment. To us, it's a throne of glory. But to the world, to the ungodly, it's the judgment. It's the throne of judgment. And... Folks, we're going to stand before his brilliance, but we're going to reflect that glory because my Bible said he shall be glorified in his saints. He's going to be glorified in his saints. You and I are going to reflect the very glory and the brilliance of the Lord Jesus Christ. You talk about a praise meeting. What's it going to be like when we all get your first glimpse of Jesus? Have you ever thought about that? Your first glimpse. This is not, it's not, it's not now worshiping him whom we've not seen. Now, all the years that we've anticipated, all the praises that have gone up from, from our very first time we learned to love Him, it's all pointing to this one moment of discovery. When we see Him, and when we see Him, He's going to be a man. He's going to be a man. He's God and He's man. He's going to have hands and feet. You're going to have the same body, the same kind of body as He does, made in His own image. But there He is. Folks, can you imagine... All he has to do is stand or stretch out his arms and say, Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Some of you don't believe it's going to happen just like that. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters and the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah. Listen, if the prodigal son was welcomed home, with all of his filth, and all of his squalor, if he's welcomed home with hugs and kisses, what will it be like when Jesus welcomes the redeemed? If he hugs and kisses a reprobate coming home, what is he going to do to his children who love him? Oh, glory be to God. What a day. Yes, the Bible said we're all going to stand before him and give an account. But I want to tell you something. When you and I as Christians and believers stand before his throne, it's not going to be a day of terror for you and I. Because the Bible said in his presence is fullness of joy and at his right hand... That's where we're going to be seated at his right hand, our pleasures forevermore. The scripture said, He that cometh, he that heareth my word and believeth on him has everlasting life, shall not come into condemnation. In fact, the, the apostle said we're going to pre, be presented before his throne, spotless, faultless, with exceeding great joy. Very clearly, there's going to be acknowledgement before the Father and all the angels. And to him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. Jesus told his apostles, you shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. We're going to judge. We're going to be there as part of this great judgment scene. It appears that the entire church of Jesus Christ will be seated at his right hand. I don't know. That scene is so massive. That scene is so beyond human comprehension. We can't even imagine it. It's beyond our comprehension. Then the goats, the sinners, are going to be brought before the throne. And Christ is going to say to those who mocked and ridiculed and persecuted and jailed and cut asunder the saints of God, martyred the millions reproach the name of Jesus Christ. And he's going to say, you joint heirs of hell. There was a time when you hated me and all my children. You trod down, you trod on my word. You trod underfoot the gospel. You crucified me afresh daily. You abused and mocked my ministers and my prophets. You had no time for those who loved me. You cursed all that was good and holy. Now look to my right hand. 
Look at the faces of all those that you ridiculed. They're my witnesses against you. We are going to be witnesses against all those who persecuted all time. Every sinner who's mocked you, every enemy of Jesus Christ is going to be there. And you are going to be a witness. The Bible says even uh, the men of Nineveh are going to rise up. Queen of Sheba is going to rise up at the judgment. Now, they're going to, many of these are going to be damned, the men of Nineveh. But we're going to rise up at the judgment and be witnesses. Christ and his saints are going to pronounce sentence upon the wicked. Depart, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. The scriptures make it clear. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? 1 Corinthians 6, 2. And judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. Daniel 7, 22. Jude 14, 15. Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints who will execute judgment upon all. Know you not that we shall judge the angels? 1 Corinthians 6, 5. We're going to judge the fallen angels, all the demon powers who harassed you. Every lying spirit is going to appear before the throne. Every lying spirit. Everyone that's been cast out of you. You're going to stand and you're going to be there when the judgment is passed. Know you not that we shall judge the angels, not the glorified, but the fallen angels, the demonic powers. Finally comes Satan. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Thou said in thine heart, I'll ascend into heaven, I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'll sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee. Now this is at the judgment. They that see thee. That's all the angels. This is all the redeemed. There he is standing before the throne on his knees, on his face. They that see shall narrowly. They're going to study it. They're, they're going to be amazed. They'll look upon thee and consider thee and say, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? That did shake kingdoms? That made the world as a wilderness? Is this the man? There he is, trembling. Oh, you talk about the Lord being glorified. You talk about the saints being glorified. And what a moment... When Jesus points to Lucifer, he says, never again. All the kingdoms of the world are mine. Be gone in everlasting darkness. Be gone out of my sight. And what a day we will stand and praise him who finally the heel has been crushed. Or, or rather the serpent's head has been crushed and he who presses his heel finally on him ends forever any thought of Satan taking authority and power. He'll be cast forever into eternal damnation and then we will know never again we'll be harassed. Never again a demon power. Never again a lying spirit. Never again. Never. Free.